You need to organize your code using feature folders. That's a common advice. But the question is, how? What's the most effective way of doing it? How to navigate those small decisions that can make feature folders either effective or friction. So in this video, we'll see three important decisions to organize your code effectively using feature folders. But first, it's important to talk about why do we need feature folders. Traditionally, we would organize codes around concepts, like if it's a service, stay together with other services. If it's a controller, stays in the controller's folder. So it's the same thing as saying the following. If I have all my pens and pencils here, when I have a new pen, a new pencil, I will put it there. But now I have my Apple Pencil that I use for my iPad. So I put it there as well. So I can apply the same principles to the things where I take notes and I can take them physically using pen and paper. So I have my physical notebook here and I have my iPad as well. So where do I keep this? Together with my notebook. So this is the traditional way of doing things, is organizing them by type. The beauty of feature folders is that now, instead of organizing it this way, we keep those notebooks separated and we keep this pen with my physical notebook, pen and paper, and also my Apple Pencil with my iPad. So I keep them together in terms of functionality. I use them together they stay together, they evolve together. As an example, if I need to replace my iPad and that means that this pencil doesn't work with that new version anymore, I evolve them together, they stay together. And one of the advantages of keeping those things together is that if I need to take notes and I want to do it digitally, I have every single thing together. I don't need to be looking for things in multiple spots. If I have a meeting and I want to take my notebook with me, I can just go there, grab the notebook and the pen that I usually use, put them on my backpack and go to the meeting. That's the idea. So in terms of codes, that means that the place where you put those things, it's a folder. So both the pen and the notebook will stay in a folder in a different place than the iPad and the pencil. So the question is, how do I keep those things organized in a way that doesn't bring friction? And for that, I have three important things that you need to think about when you are deciding how to organize your feature folders. The first one is the folder structure. Here, you will need to consider several things. The first one is your approach to segregate features. There are three common ways of doing it. The first one is using nested classes. So you have several classes inside of the same file. So if you have a class that represents the feature, like creating a new to-do item, inside of that class, you can have nested classes that will represent the things that are part of that feature, like a request object, a response object, the code that handles the creation. All of those things can stay together inside of a single file, so the feature is implemented inside of a single file. This brings the advantage that if I need to bring that feature to a different place, I just need to move that file. I know that every single thing that is inside of that file represents a given feature, but the drawback is that this is not the idiomatic way of doing things. Having nested files is something that is not the natural tendency. So that brings friction. Another possible way is by using one folder per feature. So now you remove all those classes out of a single file and all the related classes will stay together inside of a single folder. So you know that that folder contains every single thing needed for that feature. One of the advantages of this approach is that now you can build things in the more idiomatic way. But the drawback is that now you have a lot of small folders and you bring an extra level of uh, hierarchy into your folder structure. Some people don't like that. So if you don't like that approach, one alternative is by having a single folder where you have all the features. And then you start all the files with the same name. So you start the files with the name of the feature. So if you have a create to do item handler, create to do item request, create to do item response, you can understand that the beginning of the file, so all those files will stay together when you sort them because the beginning of the name of the file is the same. 
and that means that those files are related to that feature. So this one has this difference when compared to the previous one. So now you have a huge folder with a lot of files, but you still have a way to quickly find them. So I will say that between those two is a matter of personal preferences. And that takes us to a different decision that we need to take regarding folders. How do we group features? Here we will need to step out and try to find modules inside of our application. So several features that con that represent a given module. For example, all the things, if we have a, a CRUD application that are related to creating, getting, deleting a to-do item, they can stay together inside of a folder to-do items. Sometimes using this concept can be challenging because once you get into things like order management, now the grouping will not be the order maybe, but will be the order management part of your system. So you can use that as the first folder that then you can drill down and find all the features that are part of that module. What takes us to the final decision regarding folder structure, that is how to name those folders. And naming folders is extremely important because the folder where the given file lives on gives context of what that file should do. But usually I would argue that you don't have duplication based on context. So if you are inside, for example, a class that is for clients, all the methods inside of that class don't need to say client. But regarding folders, this is one approach that I don't like. The approach of keeping the names of the folder out of the file name and the class name. Why? Because the way that IDEs usually work it's easier for us to find, to quickly find things based on file name, class name. So I still prefer to have some duplication there. Otherwise, you can start building several features. And in several features, you might have the same object named request because you are not duplicating the name of the feature as part of the file name. One day when you need to perform a search or something like that will not be as trivial as searching by the file name. So now you need to consider the path as well. It's feasible, but it's friction in my opinion. So I still prefer to have duplication between file names and classes and the folders where they live. And the other thing that I would recommend is that if you use a language that has the concept of namespaces, make sure that you keep those names aligned with the folder names. You can try to use pluralized namespaces, but keep them aligned with the folder structure so it doesn't bring an extra effort when trying to come up with names to features, names to folders, and when you bring someone new into the project, they don't need to overthink a simple decision. Let's take a quick break here because I need to share with you that this week, you can take advantage of the massive discounts going on at Thumb Train to get my new course. And that course is a 17 hours long course where we go from start to production when we are building an URL shortener. It's an extremely complete course that goes from start to finish and you will see the process of building feature after feature. So if you are looking for a course that shows you how to build a cloud application that uses a wide ranges of technologies and practices, this course might be for you. So hurry up and take advantage of the massive Black Friday discounts that are going on. And now let's get back to the video. The next one is about cross-cutting concerns and duplicated code. When you start organizing your code using features, eventually you will come up to a part of your job when you need to take a decision like where this code will live when it's exactly the same that is being used by several features. A common example would be something like code regarding authentication or logging or something like that. And here you need to stop for a minute. So the first thing that you need to understand is clearly if that code is duplication. The dry principle, don't repeat yourself, is a dangerous one. By the fact that the code is equal doesn't mean it's duplicated. And now can you decide if it's duplication or not? A good rule is trying to understand if that code will evolve together. If it changes together, it stays together. Even if in the code space you can find code exactly equal to that one. If it's something that you can expect to evolve at a different rate when compared to the other thing that you have in a different place, they are not duplicated. It's kind of like an accident that they are the same. 
So that's the first decision. Once you have that clear, and now you understand that that code is in fact duplication and you want to reuse it in several places and you don't want to keep copying it across features, how can you do it? The answer to this has several possibilities. First one, is it code that deserves to be part of a package? Something that is maintained outside of that project? In some organizations, this might make sense. But do it, it doesn't bring friction to everyone. If now everyone needs to update that package, release it in order to keep working on a different thing, it's friction, it's a nightmare. Next, ask yourself if the thing that you are trying to pull out isn't in fact a feature. For example, it's quite common to see authentication being treated as a cross-cutting concern, that it can be, but also, it's a feature of your application. So maybe all that code can live inside of a feature folder for authentication. But then you will have code, like infrastructure code, like a given class that performs a data adapter layer that you have to communicate with a given database or a given API. That code, you look at it, it's not a feature, it's not something that you want to extract out of your project and expose it as a package, what should you do? On those cases, put it outside of the features. So while you have all the features contained in a single place, you can put that on the side. Why? It's infrastructure code. It's understandable that it stays out there. It might be in a different project or simply in a different folder. But make sure that inside of that file, inside of that, those classes, you don't find code from several features. A common example would be something like a repository. If each feature has a different method inside of that repository, maybe there's something wrong. You just need to segregate that interface and have several parts that will communicate with a given data adapter layer that will not be your repository. And there is a final advice that is apply it Consistently. One of the most important things in this type of approaches is to do it in a consistent way. In a way that when I get into a given feature, I know what to expect. That doesn't mean that all the feature needs to be exactly the same, because that is also part of the advantage of segregating it by feature. Now, each feature can have slightly variations. But for example, if you have an approach where each feature should have its, its own folder, doesn't mean that on a top folder you find some other features. So the organization should follow a consistent rule, should be applied with consistency. Because it's important that when someone comes to that code, they can quickly understand what to expect, so they can quickly be productive. When I'm searching inside of that code base, I don't need to think if that feature is implemented in a given way or in a different way. That doesn't mean that you can't change those decisions. At a given point, you might understand that other approach would be better. Example, you start with the approach where each feature is part of a, a single file. Eventually you realize that it's better to push those classes out of that file and all of them live inside of the same folder. Eventually you have so many folders that now you start understanding that it would be better to move those files to inside of specific feature folders. All of that is acceptable, but the important thing is to find consistency inside of the code base. Another important thing to keep your features organized is to extract them out of the entry point of your application. So in this video right here, I show you how to do that in your applications, how to organize the entry point of your application in a feature-driven way.